Welcome to a short tutorial video demonstration on how to create a pre-day chart. My name is Paul Dean and I'm a continuous improvement practitioner with over 25 years of experience. I've been creating and using pre-day charts or pre-day diagrams for many years and found them to be a very effective tool. So I'm going to show you how to create a pre-day in very simple terms. So at the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to create your own pre-day chart. I'm sure you've heard of the 80-20 rule. This basically says that 80% of the problems come from 20% of the causes. So we focus on the 20%, we fix the bulk of the problems. It's all about efficiency. We do the minimum amount of targeted work to achieve maximum results. A Pareto chart is a graph that indicates the frequency of defects according to type, as well as their cumulative impact. Pareto charts are used to find the defects to prioritize an order to highlight the greatest overall improvement potential. Pareto charts are very powerful in analyzing data and determining a priority focus based on the data. If you're overwhelmed with a lot of data, this tool will give us clear passage forward because it's based on clearly displayed data. We can engage others to either support us or help us in the journey. It provides us with a strong data supported justification for raising actions. With Microsoft, there's plenty of templates available, and I'm going to show you how to access them and generate a Pareto chart, but also I'd like to show you how to generate your own. I think it's important to know how to do it from scratch. Now, this type of chart is a must-have in any problem-solving or data analysis activity. I found it to be a fundamental tool for any business looking to improve. So, let's get started. What is a Pareto chart? Also referred to as a Pareto diagram, it's a combination of bar and line chart created simply in Excel. It shows the frequency of contributors to an issue or problem according to type and cumulative impact. It highlights the priority of order from largest contributor to the smallest. It's a very powerful tool for determining priority focus and action. And it allows us to justify our actions and it is used as a fundamental business tool, particularly in the quality space. Now there's a number of simple, easy to identify components. A Pareto is a specific combination chart. Its bars represent contributors to the problem, while the vertical axis is the size of the effect. The secondary axis is also a line showing the cumulative contribution. And importantly, the chart title explains the nature of the chart. Overall, the benefits is that it allows us to focus on the priority contributors rather than contributors that are minor or non-consequential. There's a global standard to display Pareto charts so that communication is easy and the charts are very simple to create. So where can they be used? Pareto charts can be used in a variety of applications, data analysis, problem solving, improvement projects, or even sizable DMAIC projects. We can create a Pareto chart using the following steps. Identify the issue or the problem. Gather the relevant data. Select the method for creating the chart and create the Pareto. I'll show you how to create a Pareto in Excel from scratch and then using a free template from Microsoft Office. So this is just a quick demonstration to show you how to create a Pareto chart from a table of data. So this is my table of data and the problem we're investigating is failure to meet the order due date from the 23rd 10 to the 29th 10 and these are the reasons. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to resort that to show me what's the biggest issue. So it says here the sales order admin was the most frequent issue in failing to meet the order due date. While I'm here, I'm going to do a total and sum that up. And I'm going to create two more columns. And I'm going to create percentage and cumulative percentage. Now, percentage is a simple formula of that number over the total. And to drag it down, I just want to make sure that it's an absolute number. And as I drag it down, it equals, adds it all up. I just want to check that's 100%. So in terms of cumulative, it's the percentage as we go. So I'm just going to add these to the previous numbers. And now I'm going to just copy it down. 
Okay, so that should end up in 100%. So now I've manipulated my data table. I want to now highlight these because I want to create a chart. Insert over here under bar charts. If I drop this arrow, this is the one I want. Fortunately, there's already a template ready for me to go. Create the chart, pretty simple. I might just put data labels on to show me what the numbers are. Now, very importantly, the chart title. So the chart title is very important because we want to be able to easily identify what's the problem we're investigating. So we got the failure to meet order uh, due date from the 23rd of the 10th to the 29th of the 10th. Okay, so that's our chart done. Now what it says here, the, just a couple of things, that it's now prioritized the issues by category. And this is the cumulatives. Now the slope of the cumulative line suggests that the bulk of the issues is at the front and then it kind of peters out. So the tail end is really not contributing very much, as you can see here, and the percentages. So 0 0.3, 0 0.8 is, is very small. Now, this sales order admin is a big category and we don't know what we can do to drive improvement. So we went back and created uh, another data table by uh, looking at further drilling down in this sales order admin. So we've created this and this is a sales order admin failure and now it's broken down into very specific areas. Once again, I'm going to sort that data so that I can see which is the largest, which is the smallest. And by far this date housekeeping is the largest. Also, we'll do a total and sum up the column. And then I'm going to once again create two columns. One was the percentage and the other one was the cumulative, cumulative percentage. The percentage is taken from that number over the total. Once again, I want to make it absolute. Press F4 and then I'm going to drag it down. And the cumulative is the increase as we go in percentages by adding the number to the previous. And just checking, this total should be 100%, which it is, and this total should go up to 100. So what we want to do now is we want to select this information we go insert draw a table this is a table fortunately the table we want once again I'm going to do data numbers and I'm going to change the title and that now gives me a clear indication that this date housekeeping is by far the primary cause of failures. So this is a sub Pareto chart or could be called son of Pareto. Now just skipping back for a sec, this Pareto chart didn't really tell us what we could focus on. So we've gone off on this particular area and we've drilled down and created this chart. And then the next step forward is, is now to put actions around this particular cause to resolve the failures to meet order. So just a side note while I'm here, we can also create the Pareto doing it this way. So rather than creating the percentage and the cumulative percentage, we can just highlight the data. We can go into insert and we can select a chart and the charts automatically created for us does the percentages and everything ready to go. It doesn't tell us here what the percentages are, but it creates the same chart. The second demonstration is creating a Pareto chart using a template from the Microsoft Office website. So this is templates.office.com and I want to type in here Pareto. These are the two Paretos. I prefer to use a vertical rather than horizontal. So I'm going to click on this one. And then I'm going to click download. It'll start to download a file which will open up. Go enable editing. Just going to make it a bit small so we can see it. 
So this is the Pareto automatically populated, and this is the data table. Now in the data table, I can change the information and it will change the chart accordingly. So we can do that from Microsoft Office templates. Unfortunate thing with this is it already formats the color. So if we're not particular about the color, then we can download a automatic template. But um, if we're a bit fussy about the color, then we can download it, we'll have to change the color. So that brings me to the conclusion of this tutorial on how to create a Preto chart. I encourage you to go out and try to create one for yourself. Start with some data, either real or made up, following the section using Excel and become familiar with the process. If you've never created a Pareto before, I'm certain you'll find this method very easy. And thank you for watching.